So we are here to review key data regarding smoking death rates from EU countries that have been put together as part of an EU election campaign, as the EU elections are due to take place between the 6th and the 9th of June of this year. And this webinar will consult the expertise of Professor Heiner Stöver, a social scientist from Germany, and we'll keep the webinar very short to approximately 10 to 15 minutes. So welcome, Heino, for joining me here today. It's really great to see you as always. Hello, Jessica. Um, last year and continuing in this year, we've been running a campaign about Sweden, highlighting their tobacco control policies and approach to harm reduction and consumer access to smoking cessation products. And their unique approach has led to Sweden's smoking rates plummeting to 5.6%, last year in 2023, which is a world first. And this campaign aims to highlight the reasons for these low smoking rates and subsequent death rates from smoking related diseases and compare them with other countries around the world. For the purpose of this webinar, we will look at one infographic, which will compare the smoking death rates between Germany and Sweden. And Heino will kindly provide some commentary about the reasons behind these differences. So Heino, let me just share my screen and then uh, let's hope it works. Here we go. Great, can you see the German? Yes. Mm -hmm. Great, perfect. So Heino, so you see this graphic. Uh, would you kindly just quickly um, translating the text from German to English? Yeah. Um, so, uh, tobacco-related uh, premature deaths. And Sweden is 21% lower than Germany. So, exactly. as you can see, mm -hmm. that Sweden is 21% lower than Germany regarding their tobacco smoking death rates. Why do you think mm -hmm. that Sweden's smoking death rates are so much lower than in Germany? And can you men mention the smoking habits and perhaps provide some context regarding Germany and its population? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, the use of combustible cigarettes is uh, very, very low in uh, Sweden. They have approximately 5% and they reached already the target Germany wants to reach in 2040 and the whole of Europe wants to reach uh, at 2040. So they are, let's say, um, 16 years ahead um, of schedule. Um, and um, for Germany, it's even unrealistic, as many experts uh, are stating, that in 2040 we will reduce from now 33% uh, uh, of smoking um, cigarettes um, of the uh, adults down to 5%. So there's no extra campaign, there's no extra funds or resources um, that could, uh, let's say, um, support this way in, this, in the next 16 years. Um, so it's very, very difficult to get down in such a short, relatively short period of time without an extra, uh, extra campaigning, extra um, policy change um, down to uh, 5%. Um, and I think the, uh, the difference is that uh, in Germany, we, the, the use of combustible cigarettes is uh, dominant. Uh, the majority of uh, Germans are smoking. And the uh, usage of um, alternative uh, uh, electronic nicotine uh, uh, device systems is very low. Um, so people uh, inhale or consume the nicotine via combustible cigarettes. And in Sweden, it's via snooze. Um, so it's, uh, it's not being burned, it's chewed, uh, and the nicotine is being dissolved under the lips. Uh, and this is uh, much, much less harmful than uh, the use of combustible cigarettes. I think this is the main reason uh, to, uh, to explain uh, the, this uh, fundamental difference. What more do you think the German government could do to try and accelerate uh, the use or adoption of the smoking population to these um, reduced risk products? I think it should be a wide range of uh, interventions and services. However, Germany as, uh, as a country, as a um, state, does not have a national um, anti-tobacco or anti-smoking plan. It's up to the 16 lender um, who all have their individual uh, laws and uh, uh, interventions and services to offer um, anti-smoking um, steps for those who are still smoking. 
uh, but there's no, let's say, national campaign uh, to get down to this uh, 5%, as I mentioned before. So this needs to be done. Um, funds have to, uh, to be allocated to that. Funds for research, but also for many services, um, of which is, let's say, the free of charge uh, nic nicotine replacement therapy uh, would be one, uh, but also, let's say, the uh, um, differentiation and taxation of uh, yeah, combustible cigarettes and um, uh, ENDS, electronic uh, nicotine uh, delivery systems. This is something which could, let's say, uh, motivate people to switch uh, to inhaling or vaping instead of uh, smoking and uh, uh, use of combustible cigarettes. But also, let's say, the general com uh, awareness campaigns uh, where the general population and not only the smokers, the 70 million smokers we do uh, have in Germany, but also the general uh, information understands what is meant by the switch from combustible cigarette to uh, other forms of uh, um, nicotine consumption, um, the uh, the wives of smokers, uh, the husbands of smokers, and so on. This is, I think, uh, very much needed because due to a recent study, two-thirds of the German population thinks that e-cigarettes are either as dangerous as combustible cigarettes or even more dangerous. And this is, of course, a very bad baseline for switching, because then people are um, supposed to say, why should I switch? Where's the benefit if it's even more or as uh, dangerous and harmful than combustible cigarettes? So if you were to go to your physician and say you want to quit smoking, um, what would a physician say, do you think? I mean, in Germany, would they you know, speak about stop smoking services other products would they say will just stop smoking completely what's the general smoking cessation advice or approach if you want to give up smoking in germany yeah so my uh, my doctor would say either quit or die he would definitely say either abstinence or nothing or you die early and prematurely um, i think this would be his advice there's nothing in between uh, so physicians do not uh, play on the gray area between abstinence and uh, uh, addiction um, or abstinence, uh, completely abstinence uh, of uh, not only combustible cigarettes, but also completely abstinence of nicotine consumption. Um, but to a huge extent, this is unrealistic to many people. It's a too, it's a, it's a step too far away for many people. They, many people won't give up everything the ritual, uh, the combustible, the ritual with combustible de devices or cigarettes, and uh, the nicotine intake. So um, at least uh, I think it needs an interim step in order to make um, the uh, the final uh, goal of uh, um, quitting uh, nicotine and smoking uh, at all uh, possible and realistic and likely. Yeah. Do you not think that that was the intention of heat not burn products to be that interim step because it's still it's still tobacco, um, but you're not burning, um, and it seems like that's more of an interim step after smoking before moving on to, to e-cigarettes. Has that not taken off in Germany? Of course, this is uh, um, a um, decision by the people themselves. It's not being supported by politicians or by the health agencies that we have. Um, so people who wanted to switch uh, are relatively left alone uh, or get the sort of a counseling advices uh, from the uh, from the traffickers of e-cigarettes and uh, heat not burn products. Um, but definitely sure, if we think of the main target group of e-cigarettes, that is the long-term smoker aged 30 plus, 25 plus, uh, something like that, uh, then this is uh, the ideal target group, uh, which, uh, let's say, can be targeted uh, in order to make the switch. It should not be juveniles or young adults, as we see now with a lot of uh, disposable campaigns, which is uh, quite widespread uh, in Germany, as in other countries, where, let's say, uh, young people are taking disposables um, uh, and uh, instead of uh, starting to smoke, um, anyway, for, for the main target group, this definitely is the key goal. And um, yeah, we should go for it. 
Yeah. So currently, then, how would I get hold of um, uh, a e-cigarette if I if I'm in Germany? So can you buy them at your local retailer? Is it very controlled? How does it work currently? No, they are quite uh, easily accessible. Um, you need to be uh, 18 plus. Um, and there's a lot of vape shops uh, in each and every city. You can uh, order them from the internet. Uh, so there's uh, relatively uh, low restriction on that. I mean, the restriction are concerning the quality control of liquids and uh, the devices themselves. But uh, in general, uh, it's easily uh, accessible. Um, and yeah, as we all know, disposables can be purchased uh, via internet for uh, young people under 18 as well. <clears throat> so, uh, and they do have even, let's say, quite uh, at least some of the devices, uh, um, children friendly uh, advertisement and layout and uh, outlook, something like that. Um, this is, of course, something um, which we need to, uh, to change definitely. Uh, and still in Germany, it's the last country in the EU, um, still in Germany, uh, the public advertisement is still allowed until the end of this year. However, it took us, let's say, 20, 30 years to point out, uh, let's say, the negative effects of, ad of public advertisement. So these are things that should be stopped. Um, but let's say the, um, the motivation to switch to less harmful products this should be supported by the government and our health agencies. Mm, very well said. And just one final question. Do you have any comments um, or recommendations regarding uh, regulation? So like a risk proportionate regulatory framework, um, anything at all that can be helpful? Absolutely. And it starts with taxation uh, so that people uh, get the, uh, the signal. Look, uh, it pays out um, <clears throat> to switch uh, from combustible cigarettes to uh, vaping products, not only health-wise, but also financially. Uh, and both, uh, let's say, strategies are, I think, convincing, persuading, and uh, are motivating people to, let's say, consider switching. Um, so it pays out money-wise and health-wise. And these are two main factors and main motors in order to make the switch.